Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Spirit, the Life Generator. Everlasting Gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the Supernatural Teacher. First lesson, Romans chapter 8, verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Second lesson, John 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Golden text, Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and loss. Quote, Brethren, what is read unto you now constitutes the last bus stop of this age. Take note of this statement which says that they that are Christ has crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. Christ himself does not have anything to do with the flesh at all. He did not hate anybody. He did not gossip. Nor did he keep anything for himself. All his concern was joy for his brethren at all times. And this same joy is what is needed in the kingdom of God. Here there is nothing like flow, like frowning of the face, like crying, quarreling, thinking, or causing any division. The Holy Spirit of God abhors these things. There must be, as a rule, only joy among the brethren in the kingdom of God at all times. Brethren, the gospel of today is designed according to the will of the Father. Paul said, What will separate me from the love of our Lord Jesus Christ? Is it sickness? Is it quarrel? Nakedness or death? Nothing can separate me from the love of God. It is time for you to realize that involvement in all these material things of this world is death. And how can you resurrect when already you are dead? Of a truth, all are living in the Spirit of God. And so, if any of you should live without the Spirit of God, then you are not at all useful either to yourself or to God. Now reason it this way. If the spirit dies, can anyone live? But if you successfully kill the flesh, you will surely have an everlasting life. Brethren, I want to ask you these simple questions concerning the fact that many of you have been here in Brother of the Cross and starved for 30 years, 40 years, and so on? If so, have you ever seen the leader frowning his face? Have you ever seen him crying? Have you ever heard him shouting? Have you ever seen him murmur or curse? He knows nothing about molestation. In fact, all those carnal things lead you to death, but all those who succeeded in using the Holy Spirit to kill the flesh will have everlastingly, will live everlastingly. Spiritual, cho spiritual chorus Only joy dwells in the throne of God. Brethren, have you ever heard that our Lord Jesus Christ lament, curse God, or frown his face? When did he feel terrible to the extent 
of speaking anything evil against God, right from the day our Lord Jesus Christ baptized and received the Holy Spirit, he had conquered everything on earth. First witness, Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 to 12. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Second witness, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Third witness, Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Brethren, have you ever heard me complaining that somebody has stolen my property? Even when any of my brethren is transferred, do you hear me cry? Since the establishment of Brothers of the Cross and Star, nobody seemed to know its intricacies. Its intricacies. You only come in here to play and dance and commit all sorts of atrocious acts. And for that deviation, and for that deviation, brethren, your spirit has to die. And after that, you would not know anything about yourself again. But when the Spirit of God is with you, certainly you must live forever. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ could live forever, although many people erroneously claim that he had died. He lives in spirit and so he will continue to live till eternity. One cannot serve two masters. One servant cannot serve two masters at the same time. This is true because you cannot love both the spirit and the flesh successfully at the same time. If you love the flesh, certainly you will hate the spirit and vice versa. Brethren, doubt not that this is our last bus stop. Here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, we do not cry. We do not lament, gossip, brag, hate and so forth. If unfortunately you happen to do any of these things, your spirit must surely die. Can you not see that the Father himself is life? Likewise, our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and all the angels. Here we experience no problem because we are working in the Spirit and the Father alone does his work with the Spirit no more sadness, no more weeping, etc. Only joy exists in the kingdom of God. Why does man hate the truth? Brethren, you can recall when our Lord Jesus Christ called Lazarus to resurrect. The news spread to all the people about what he had done to the deceased Lazarus. The news spread widely to everywhere until it came to the hearing of Caiaphas, who was the high priest at that time. And when the people reported it officially to him, he said, Do you not see with me that it is better for one man to die than the whole nation to perish? By this, they thought that when they kill our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, his wonderful words, would automatically end. That is the reasoning of the carnal minded people. But little did they know that when they kill the flesh, the spirit will still exist and even forever. Eventually, after his death, on the third day, our Lord Jesus Christ resurrected and became more powerful than when he was in the flesh. Now, the news of his great works is spreading everywhere more than ever before. That is exactly what I am trying to hammer into the minds of everybody. 
when you see something happening to somebody you carelessly say that he or she is dead no he is still alive in the same way when the worldly people shout about that leader or lumba or lumba or boo is dead i say you should not worry because they do not know who the father is anyway i am always functionally here and in america and in london and in all the places in this world breadwin as you are seeing i am using the spirit to conquer the flesh and so i want you all to master the same principle let our first lesson be reread first lesson romans chapter 8 verse 13 for if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live brethren do you hear that expression if you live after the flesh which signifies hatred anger spite segregation stealing weeping lamentation and gossiping etc you will be totally damned but if you purposefully use the spirit to defeat the flesh nothing will cause you to panic again then of course you will be filled with the spirit of god spiritual chorus where is joy found Joy is found in heaven, in the midst of the angel. Where is sorrow found? It is found here on earth, in the midst of those who are carnally minded. This involves fighting, quarreling, and gossiping, etc. And so, if you find yourself doing these things, you should instantly realize that the Spirit of God is not in you, that you are carnally minded and hence a slave to the flesh. Therefore, as a consequence, you must be totally damned. Brethren, the Gospel is revealed to you that all are not practicing the word of God. After all of you, are all of you then not carnally minded? It is so because many of you are still cursing people, committing fornication, fighting, gossiping, and doing all sorts of atrocious things, even to a worse level than you were doing before ever you came in here. Therefore, you will belong to the flesh. Therefore, you still belong to the flesh. Why die in the bud? Brethren, consider the life of a yam tuber. If it does not germinate before you plant it, it will remain under the earth without germinating and finally die in here and finally die in there. But if it germinates before you plant it, it will quickly shoot out and produce a good yield. In the same way, if someone is carnally minded, the person will not live long because the person is already dead under the process and will not be able to resurrect any longer. But whoever lives according to the Spirit, when he dies, he will resurrect and live forever. A lot of people keep asking you, why is your father not willing to help you? When you hear that, you become disturbed and angry. I am telling you that such a question is propounded to only the people who are in the flesh and still doubting. Their reward is eternal condemnation. I do not have any problem with those things because I am always filled with joy. That is why it is said, when the Comforter, the Holy Spirit of truth will come, he will lead you to the accurate knowledge of truth. Let your second lesson be reread. Second lesson, John 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, 
whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Illustration. Spiritual wealth is our joy. Brethren, the only thing we are proud of here is joy. Right now I want to use earthly things to illustrate heavenly things. Once there was a certain young man who was working in the bank. They started by paying him 20 naira every month. He served in the bank for 25 years before his retirement from the job. After a few months, they paid him pension and with it he bought three lorries. He decided thereafter to return home with all his wealth. And along the way, armed robbers snatched his two lorries that went ahead of him and finally waited for the third lorry the man and his family were traveling in. When the family, when the family got to the robber's checkpoint, they equally collected it and asked, the aunt, and asked the owner of the lorry whether he was annoyed. The owner said no, because they had not collected what belonged to him. The armed robbers then told him that they had collected his other two lorries and wealth. The owner of the lorries told them, but you have not taken what belongs to me. The robbers became offended and then removed his, sho removed his shoes, his clothes, his cap, and everything from his body. Even then the young man maintained his stand. The armed robbers then pushed him aside, considering him foolish and mad. But the man was completely unruffled and filled with joy. He finally walked home to his family house. Before his arrival, the news had spread throughout the whole village. And then the villagers came out en masse to console him for what had happened to him. But surprisingly to them, the young man told them that nothing had happened to him. They did not take what belongs to me, the man said. They then asked him, what really belongs to you? And he happily answered, Jesus belongs to me. Brethren, after a few days, people sent gifts to him until he became very wealthy again. Brethren, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Immediately you have the Holy Spirit, you are able to conquer everything in the world. Brethren, the story you have just heard is what had really happened in this world. It is a natural fact that if you have the Holy Spirit, you would not have problems. Like that brother from Ethiopia, they threw his they threw him inside the river and he swam until he reached a certain area from where he noticed the smoke in the air which, suggest, which suggested that fire was burning there and the place must be a village. He swam to the shore and walked into the village. Nobody knew how he managed to reach. 34 Amber Street, Calabar in Nigeria. There was no money in his pocket. He did not sleep in anybody's house either. He always slept outside. They kindly provided food for him, but he refused to eat and he did not bath either. While very many of you are deadly seeking for the things of this world, others are steadfastly running away from them. I have been telling you that since 1938, I did not plan anything for myself. Since 1942, I have not been interested in any carnal thing of this world. Otherwise, I would have killed the Holy Spirit in me. From this illustration, you can see that the Holy Spirit conquers and rules over the fishes in the water. He controls the air 
heaven and earth and so forth. Do not joke with the spirit, brethren. Many people often believe that I sometimes enter aeroplane, but you know that I do not enter any aeroplane, car, ship, etc. I do not eat fish, I do not eat meat, etc. But I demonstrate my kind of life in order to show you what the spirit is like. It is not bought in the market. Hence, I have been teaching you how to kill the flesh and excel in the spirit. An ideal example. The first and the only time I put on a tie was in the us was on the 25th December 1944 at Biakpan and ever since I left Biakpan I have not gone back therefore if you enjoy being carnally minded continue to put your heart in the things of this world and see how you will be able to see good and how the Spirit of God will be happy to use you Needless mentioning the place I was living in, for if you came there, then you would have pitied yourself. It was an old, dejected hut, and if you looked closely, you would have thought that it would soon fall down. But the people who were inside that room were more than 20 in number. Besides, the particular place where the father was sleeping was, was mercilessly leaking during the rainy season, but I was very comfortable there. I did not experience any problem whatsoever. Brethren, if you continuously walk in the Spirit of God and are able to mortify the flesh, you will have no problem whatsoever and wherever you may be at a particular time. I have never contested an election to become a chairman or hold any post in this kingdom. I am just a free man and I enjoy natural life. Therefore, I want everybody to come and enjoy this kingdom with me and be willing to use the power of the spirit to kill the flesh. This is how you will be able to rejoice in this kingdom with me. Finally, you will not have problems any longer. Brotherhood of the cross and star is a problem-free entity. Many people claim to be in Brotherhood of the cross and star, yet they complain and keep saying, I am in Brotherhood, but I suffer, I am sick. I tell you that you are not in brotherhood of the cross and star. As far as you are a member of this kingdom, if you also live in the spirit, you will not be having problems at all. No sickness, no luck, no sorrows will ever come your own way. The spirit of God will be leading you and it will always be with you to drive all problems away from you, but immediately you fight, quarrel, fornicate, get offended and commit other vices, you will quickly kill the spirit in you. Choose between the two, brethren. When you overcome the carnal things of this world, nothing will stop you from living forever. Again, like the brother from Ethiopia who says, What will happen to the flesh? What has happened and what is happening now is not my concern, I tell you. He is my true witness throughout the whole world. Like the father, now I will never go to any part of the world physically. But I know all what is going on throughout the world. How do I manage to know these things when I have never got into the I've never gone into the bush or inside river? I am always here, as you know. Therefore, if you walk in the spirit, allow the spirit of God to lead you 
and when you use the spirit to kill the flesh, you will realize then that you are on top of the world. When you do this, you will have no problems whatsoever, for everything will be afraid of you. Let our golden text be read again. Golden text, Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Brethren, there is no need bothering yourself with fasting every day or going for a repeated ministry work and so on. The only solution is for you to endeavor to mortify the flesh on the cross. Immediately you do this, the Spirit of God will dwell richly in you and you will then be able to overcome the world. The Holy Spirit will also use you limitlessly. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will also use you limit, limitlessly in manifesting His glory. That is why it is said that the new wine has to be put in a new bottle. Again, God says that this world is not a good dwelling place. Hence, He instructs that we should do away with the things of this world so that we may be clean enough for the Holy Spirit to make us an embodiment of all good things. The Spirit is like an embankment manifesting His glory. That is why it is said that the new wine has to be put in new bottle. When you purify yourself, then you will have no problem. Rather, you will be on top of the world and the Spirit of God will use you as the Gospel has stated. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. The overwhelming force. The children of God have clearly stated in one of their songs that the Father has come. The flesh has been damned and consequently the Spirit has taken utter control. Moreover, if you are a child of God, when, when, whenever you come here, you have to remain peaceful. If you are not peaceful, that means that you do not belong here. And as such, it is better for you to leave. If you come in here to fight, quarrel, disturb, you certainly do not belong to this kingdom since such things are not allowed here. This is simply a place of joy, peace, and all the virtues. Those are the only things which you will see here. Furthermore, brethren, how now you are seeing the result of the fact that here in Brotherhood, we walk in the Spirit. We do not have anything to do with evil tendencies. Therefore, it is only peace and joy you can find in air together with the attitude of serving God and the destitute. All virtues are permanently, all virtues are prominently in display here. Hence, I want all of you to do the same so that you will rejoice in the new kingdom of God as I am. Beloved, it is said that a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.